Today, we're talking about this. The Samyang 85 1.4. Oh, yeah. Yo, let's do this. Come fix your homie rolling. Let me offer my condolence. You don't know just how I'm doing. The silence go to broke because they know we're talking fluent. Got them under the influence. The truth is talking to them. I'm going to find your ego. Open them up. I'm a Nikon Z user. I use the Nikon Z6. I came over from the D7500, which is a crop sensor lens, which means I have a couple of lenses, like this one, the 18-140, to but they're crop sensor lenses. They're meant to be on crop sensor cameras, and as such, when I put them on the Nikon Z6 with the handy little FTZ adapter, they're not full resolution, and that's a problem. Now, any Z camera user will tell you one of its biggest downsides of using Z cameras is a lack of range in lenses. Now, I currently have this 24 to 70 f4 lens, the 50 millimeter f1.8, which is a fantastic lens. I love it. It's super sharp. It's fast. It's brilliant. I love using it, but it's 50 millimeters only. And like I said, I also have the 24 to 70, which gets me to 70 millimeters which is great, but what if I want to go beyond? And what if I want to go faster than f4? What if I want to go faster than 1.8? I still have this. This is 18 to 14 and f3.5 to f5.6. Not exactly fast. It gets range, but it's not fast. So what do I do if I want to go beyond 70 millimeter? That's where this bad boy comes in. The Samyang 85mm MF f1.4. The weight of this thing is fairly substantial. The lens in and of itself is fairly heavy, but that's partly also because at f1.4 it has big glass inside and it's made out of metal housing which feels great, by the way. More on that in a minute. And having been converted from whatever mount this was previously made for, this lens was clearly not made specifically for the Z. Well, it was made, it just wasn't developed for the Z mount. You can tell that basically this entire bit is an adapter. It's a Z mount adapter, that's all it is. It's there to get the range between the glass and the sensor because the Z is a mirrorless and I'm guessing initially these lenses were developed for DSLRs and as such they need the this kind of adapter in between. That increases the total size of this lens quite significantly. I, imag I mean imagine from this to that. Now personally I don't think that's a big problem. The weight is more of an issue but when you're dealing with f1.4 lenses that's kind of what you have to deal with and when you attach this it looks like a massive lens. But it's not really. Once you take it off and store this separately, which I do, I can actually fit this lens vertically into my camera bag. Just about. But I can. Which is great. So the saving in size I would have with a DSLR, just being like this, isn't really that relevant to me because I can fit it in my camera bag vertically anyway. I don't have to put it in horizontally. So it fits into my camera bag perfectly. I already mentioned that this comes with a metal housing and it feels fantastic. The build quality on this feels superb. Now, they don't have weather sealing, so I'd be careful using this lens on your camera when you're out and about shooting in the rain, which I like to do. Um, so be careful when you do that. But other than that, the build quality seems fantastic. Because it's a manual lens, it has an aperture ring. And I love it. I love the clickiness of it. I know that there are a couple of lenses that have a switch which can turn the aperture ring into smooth running rather than clicky, but I like the clicky. I like it. The focus ring itself is a little hard going, which can make it a little slow for you to focus, particularly at f1.4. It's sometimes a bit difficult to find focus, but that doesn't detract from the overall build quality in my opinion. There is no autofocus. It's manual. 
At f1.4, the bokeh on this thing is fantastic. It's creamy, it's smooth, it's delicious. I love it. When you have light elements in the background, they're not perfectly circular. They're sort of slightly oval, which personally, I don't find that to be a problem. I know some people have a huge preference as to how their bokeh looks. Um, I, as long as it's silky smooth, I'm a happy man. There's also no image stabilization. Come on. At f1.4, this lens can appear to be a little bit soft. It's not the sharpest. That being said, it's also not the most expensive. In fact, it's probably one of the cheapest 85 millimeter at f1.4 that you can find. Like I said, it's, it's a tad soft at f1.4 and it's extremely difficult to find focus properly. Now, one of the biggest downsides of this lens is its focusing distance, which is at 1.1 meters. So this is by no means a macro lens, it, and you can't pretend like it is either. But as soon as you start stopping up like at f2.8, it becomes really sharp. I really like the images that come out of this lens, particularly at lower apertures. But at f1.4, if you can find that focus, that razor thin line of focus, it is fantastic. The bokeh and the background separation is just delicious. I love it. Now that just might be me because I've never owned a 1.4 lens before. So maybe it's that. I'm sure lenses that cost upward of a thousand dollars are gonna be even sharper. I have absolutely no doubt about that. But until I can afford those, I'm happy with that. I've mentioned it a minute ago. It's a manual lens. It's gonna be a bit cumbersome. You're gonna have to manually select your aperture with the aperturing. You're gonna have to manually focus, which for photographs, I don't really think is a big issue. You wouldn't wanna use this for sports photography, that's for sure. But landscape photography, portraiture, it's fine. You, in all likelihood, you're probably using manual anyway, just to ensure that you get that exact focus right. But it also means you're likely not going to be using this for video shoots. Especially at f1.4, you're going to be constantly hunting for focus and it's going to be worse than an early Nikon going back and forth with your focus and you're never going to find it. It would be a nightmare. So I would primarily recommend this lens for photography rather than videography. One of the other big downsides of this camera being fully manual is that there's no communication with the camera itself. That means that you're, when you're taking pictures, you're not gonna be able to tell in the metadata when you, once you import them into Lightroom or whatever software you use, you're not gonna be able to tell at what aperture you were shooting or at what focal length. Now, if you have a relatively limited lens setup like I do, you will be able to tell which one is shot at 85 versus, for example, 50. That's relatively easy. But I like knowing exactly what aperture I shoot at. So what you have to do is either constantly on a single shoot, shoot at the same aperture, so you know afterwards which one it was, or you're gonna have to try and remember or write down which images, which frames you took at what aperture. And that can be cumbersome. So that's a big downside for me. Photography can be prohibitively expensive, and companies like Samyang bring down that floor just a little bit, just so that photographers who don't have massive budgets can still participate in the photography game at a higher level than just some adapted kit lens. But although this lens might be inexpensive, it's not for beginners. This is not a beginner lens. You need to be comfortable with using completely manual lenses and you need to know how to use them. You need to be pretty good at pulling your own focus. If it's for video, like I said, you better be shooting at lower apertures. But 
overall it's not a beginner lens uh if if you're if you're a beginner and you're looking at buying this lens i would recommend you to get something different um probably something similarly priced but just not this if you found this video in any shape or form informative or have helped you with some kind of decision making process do leave a like maybe even subscribe every once in a while i do these kind of reviews and it would really mean a lot if you have any questions with regards to the lens itself leave them down in the comments i will answer every single one of them if you are keen to explore more images shot on this 85 millimeter samyang lens head over to my instagram i've linked it down below there i always mark all of my images with the metadata information the focal length iso shutter speed aperture it's all there i always make sure to record it uh, so you can check out more in depth what kind of images you can be shooting with this lens. Other than that, see ya.